okay, I apologize for the shadow from my phone. But here's part two of the amino acids and enzymes. So um, we left off when we were getting close to the, the, dentrif the dentrifices enzymes. And that's just how they have like whatever non-FDA approved toothpaste. And they have like these fancy ingredients in them. And they, they say that it's antimicrobial. This is how. Um, is because they have things like um, ammo glucosidase or however we say it. So it turns polysaccharides or what's in, found in your mouth, the saliva, and breaks it up um, in, into glucose. And then from glucose, we have glucose oxidase. Um, what that does is that it, it keeps glucose, but it um, makes a peroxy acid, which is what's important for this thiocyanate. Um, the thiocyanate you have the SCN um, and then uh, lactoperoxidase. And what it does is it pops off water, but it makes it so you have this OSCN negative or hypothiocyanate. Um, but this acts as an mm -hmm. antimicrobial. So that's why you have like toothpaste and whatever that are not approved by like the ADA, but they have antimicrobial effects. Um, I'm just gonna read through these. These are like the types of enzymes that we have. So we have product inhibition. What this means is that when we make products, the products actually will inhibit the reaction. And this happens a lot in all the material that we've studied so far. We have allosteric regulation. So it causes a conformational change by binding to a place other than the active site. So both these are reversible so far. Then we have covalent. So it's when a molecule attaches covalently to an enzyme um, and it still causes a conformational change. So the two differences here is that this one makes a covalent bond to the enzyme and this one binds to a separate place um, other than the active site. Still reversible for covalent. We have protein, protein. Um, and this is when an enzyme binds to another, forming a complex. This is still reversible. Um, then we have zymogen cleavage, with, and this one is the irreversible one. So this is a protein that's clipped by a zymogen. So they go in and the protein's clipped, so it's actually missing a piece of the protein. And this typically happens in the, the GI tract, but it's irreversible. We have enzyme synthesis and enzyme um, degradation which is pretty much the same thing the more enzyme that you have the higher the rate the less the enzyme the lower the rate um, so we have these inhibitors so competitive so it competes with the substrate for the active site um, it shifts the curve to the right and the example that we were given was ibuprofen it's reversible we have non-competitive, which binds to the same place other than the active site. Oh, excuse me, some place other than the active site. It can bind um, where the, whether the substrate is bound or not. So it will go in and bind in, even if there's nothing there to activate it. It can just go in and, and bind to where the enzyme's at. Um, this one lowers the Vmax. Um, and the example that we have was the uh, caspofungin or I think it's Candicus or whatever it is called. Um, so that one's, I mean, that one is reversible. So the first two are reversible, but here's the irreversible. And obviously by the name, you can tell it's irreversible. Um, and it pretty much poisons the enzyme um, at the active site. So if an inhibitor um, is greater than the enzyme concentration, so if the inhibitor concentration is greater than the enzyme concentration, then it will re remain inactive. So it just shuts it off. This one lowers Vmax and our example was aspirin. So here's a little table that we were given for competitive. Um, if you have a competitive inhibitor, it increases KM. So it's going to shift that value to the right, but it doesn't change the Vmax. It still can make it to that hundred percent non-competitive and irreversible, they don't change the KM. It still stays at the same concentration, but it lowers Vmax, so it drops that, that amount down. And that's that first module.